How's it going, everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now, I got a little surprise for you guys today because we're gonna take a look at the Rocket Extreme Q external SSD from Sabrent. Now, I know normal SSD videos aren't really that exciting. It's kind of boring sometimes because it doesn't give you any extra FPS in your games. But for content creators like I am, this is a must have and it makes editing so much faster and enjoyable because there's nothing worse than editing a video and just waiting for the clips to load or dropping uh, frames. It's horrible. So a fast SSD is a must have. Now, in the past, I have taken a look at some other external SSDs and none of them really comes close to this little monster. That is because this is a four terabyte Thunderbolt 3 external SSD that can reach speeds over two gigabytes a second. That's more than double what USB external SSDs can currently do. So then starting off with pricing, the Rocket Extreme Q Thunderbolt version is not necessarily the cheapest out there. It is starting at $170 for the 500 giga model and going up to a whopping $1,600 for the 8 terabyte model. Yes, 8 terabytes, that's massive for external SSD. Now, the great thing about the new Extreme Q models is that unlike the previous normal Extreme model, the Q allows you to actually connect it both to Thunderbolt 3 and then also to a normal USB connection. So if you don't have a device that actually has a Thunderbolt 3 connection or you want to potentially transfer files to a system that doesn't, you can still use it with the new Q model. So that is awesome. Now also, that might sound a bit expensive, $170 or $1,600 for the 8 terabyte model. But when comparing it to something like Samsung's T7 portable SSD, which isn't really that much cheaper on this thing, the value-wise for the Sabrent just keeps increasing because that T7 is still just a normal USB 3.2 Gen 2 SSD. So theoretically, you're getting over double the performance for this one and not paying anywhere close to double in price. So that is quite a good deal. But now because this is a portable SSD, build quality is a very important. You don't potentially want to lose all of your files on this SSD, especially if it's an 8 terabyte model. So I am happy to see that the Rocket Extreme Q is pretty much built like a tank because it does have a solid piece of aluminum around the SSD that's actually quite heavy as well. Now to add even more protection, you do also have, where did I put that thing? You do also have this rubber sleeve that can put over the SSD for some additional protection, especially if you maybe drop it, it will help prevent the aluminum cover actually scratching or chipping off. So that is kind of a, a good idea to go for. It's just a bit expensive at $60, so be mindful of that. But in the meantime, you do also get a tin container for some additional protection when traveling and to keep your cables nice and neat as well. Now, for the optimal performance, you will need to make two small changes inside Windows. I'm not exactly sure about Mac, but it is quite a simple with the guide that Samprint included. So just follow that. But now getting into how the Rocket Extreme Q performs. The sample that I have here is again the 4 terabyte model and something that you will need to keep in mind is that performance is going to differ between capacities and then also your system actually plays a big role in that as well which we'll get into a bit later. So then for our tests, we did a couple of comparisons where we did compare the Extreme Q to a couple of my other external SSDs, but those ones are just USB, a couple of internal NVMe SSDs, and then also we tested it in a both Thunderbolt 3 mode, and then also in just a normal USB 3.2 Gen 2 mode to see what the performance gain is thanks to that Thunderbolt 3 connection. And it's quite a lot. So then from the benchmarks, we can see that in sequential reads and writes, none of the other portable SSDs even comes close to the rocket. It's only the internal NVMe SSDs that's 
actually faster and that's to no surprise really. Even in USB mode, it does really well, running just below the one gigabyte a second mark. However, when it comes to random reads and writes, it does fall behind quite a bit. But primarily, you're going to use this drive for your video files for content creators uh, or some other larger files, especially because it is an external SSD. It's not going to focus that much on random reads and writes. So I did a test where I copied a 38 gig Steam backup that I made from the SSD to my laptop's internal NVMe SSD to test the write speeds, then copied it back to test the read speeds, and then finally I made a duplicate of the file on the same drive to see a combination of reads and writes. And of course, to no surprise, the rocket was the fastest by a large margin. Even on USB connection, it was the third fastest, only losing to one of the other USB 3.2 Gen 2 Transcend SSDs. Now, I also wanted to redo that test again, but this time take a larger file. So I took my 212 gig Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 folder and actually found out that the internal WD720 NVMe SSD on my laptop was actually the bottleneck dropping speeds down to 300 megabytes a second whereas the rocket is stood steady at over one gigabyte a second and even almost reaching 800 megabytes a second when copying to itself so not bad at all now there is something that you will need to keep in mind again like i mentioned and that is that the speeds are going to differ depending on the capacity that you go for and then also, again, your system does play a big role. So for all of my testing, I use my Triton 500 laptop, which is a pretty high-end uh, gaming laptop. But with that, I never reached that 2,700 megabytes a second advertised speed. I did reach 2,600, but only in ATTO's benchmark and not in Crystal Disk. But when comparing to some of the other reviewers out there who had a different samples, for instance, a Tweak Town, they were able to hit 2,900 megabytes a second on their two terabyte model, which is even higher than the advertised speed. And then also Mac World hit that advertised speed, but it was on a PC with a PCI Express a Thunderbolt 3 card. So just keep that in mind if you don't have extremely strong a system. And also, I didn't test it on a Mac because I don't own one, so I couldn't see how it would perform there. But you might actually get a bit um, better performance out of it because it is Mac and usually it's a bit better uh, in the instance than Windows. Windows is kind of horrible. But now, with all of that said and done, let's talk about temperatures. Because you might be thinking, sending all of that data at that high speed across to something this small it should get quite a bit toasty and yes and no. So I did a 20 minute stress test where I copied the files around and then also did some benchmarks to see if I can push it to its limits. And it started at around 31 degrees and it never went above 60 degrees, which was actually good. But that was on the center only. And after just a couple of minutes, it actually got so hot that when I tried to move it, it actually scared me somewhat. So I didn't really want to touch it because it was extremely hot, like too hot to really touch. But after just giving it a couple of minutes or more, it cooled off to where it was completely fine again at that 30, 35 degrees mark. And then it was fine. So it just looks like it does take some time for the heat to dissipate outwards across that aluminum heat sprayer after a heavy workload. So just something to be mindful, <laughs> you don't want to pick it up right after a heavy work session. So the in conclusion, this thing is going to be a beast to edit videos of. I actually have actually been editing a couple of videos of this thing and it's been a dream. A no drop in frames or waiting for anything to load. It's just quick all around, even on my, for some reason, slower laptop. So it did everything perfectly and I'm going to edit pretty much all of my videos off this one now because my laptop only has a 500 gig internal SSD. So yeah, four terabytes is going to help quite a bit. So a massive thank you to Severin for sending it over for review. 
Also, you guys want to get it for yourself, please check out the links in the video description. Also, like, share, subscribe, and comment like always. And then I will take all of you next time. Cheers, guys.